This video is about the Helmholtz resonator and the Helmholtz resonator element uh, that is in SIDLAB. Starting here at the model building screen, we notice that there is a element for the Helmholtz resonator called H resonator. Um, if you want to know about the theory, you can always go to the help menu for that element and up will come the H resonator theory explaining what it is and all the relevant equations. We're not going to go through the theory right now, but know that it's there and you can always refer to it. So what we will do though is uh, drag in the Helmholtz resonator element and fill in some of the key fundamental parameters. So it requires uh, a volume and I'm going to use 60 uh, cubic inches for the volume and the neck length which is the, this little neck here uh, we're going to use the length of 1 and a neck area of 0 0.3. Uh, notice that it also asks for a main pipe area and for that I will use 1.2 um, square inches. Okay, there are also some additional parameters that you can explore on your own. Uh, one of those is the added neck resistance, which we will talk about a little bit later. So now we have an element with all the necessary uh, parameters filled in, or parameter values filled in, and we can create a model with just this simply by adding the green dot and the stopping point, the red dot, for the model. Now we are ready to go to the calculation screen and calculate the transmission loss of this particular resonator. Notice that uh, there is one peak and nothing else. Okay, so uh, a Helmholtz resonator, its fundamental frequency is just that. It has only one fundamental frequency unlike a quarter wave resonator that has a fundamental frequency plus all the odd integer multiples. Now, uh, even though we're attenuating at only one frequency with a Helmholtz resonator, um, in general they are more compact than other types of resonators. So that uh, is one reason for why they are highly used. I'm also going to go back now and increase the resolution to 1 hertz and put an ending frequency at 500 hertz and recalculate the transmission loss. So now we have a uh, resonant frequency of about 125 hertz for this resonator. Now, you know, maybe we want to line this up with a fundamental engine tone that is problematic. So we want to, we mo may want to move this up or down in frequency. So let's see what happens if we uh, if we go back and change the um, the volume to 30 hertz. Okay, what's going to happen? All right, we'll go back to the calculation screen, and we will hold this graph so that we can compare it to what we're doing now and recalculate. And we'll see now that the uh, resonant frequency has increased to about 175 hertz. Now let's go back again and uh, change the neck length or reduce the neck length to um, 0.5 inches. Or no, I'm going to use 0.25 inches because sometimes uh, the neck length is simply the thickness of the metal. If say you're punching holes in a pipe to create a uh, Helmholtz resonator surrounded by another pipe, it may just be the thickness of the metal. So I'm going to use 0.25 for that. Um, now we'll go back and calculate again. I'll notice that the frequency has increased even more, almost to 250 hertz. Now let's, let's uh, reduce the neck area parameter and see what happens there. Uh, you might think that it would go up again in uh, frequency, uh, but we're going to reduce it to 0 0.2 
and go back to recalculate and notice now that the frequency has not gotten higher it's gotten lower and this is not intuitively obvious why that occurs with just reducing the neck um, area but if you go back through the theory you could probably convince yourself yeah that makes a lot of, of sense um, now even though we have only one frequency of attenuation with a Helmholtz resonator. Notice that, uh, or what is often done in design is to add a series of Helmholtz resonators to get broader band attenuation over, over broader frequency range. So uh, let's do that. Let's go back to the model and get rid of the endpoint and copy with a control C and a control V gives us a second Helmholtz resonator with identical parameters as the first, but I will go back and uh, change the volume of the second one to 60 again. So now we have 60 cubic inches for the volume of this, 30 cubic inches for that one. Uh, and I'll reconnect, we're going to connect these in series and add the final endpoint to the model. And I'll go back here and calculate so now we have two uh, peaks um, this kind of makes sense uh, we you know we changed the volume of course there's another peak uh, but we have a problem because now we have a, a minimum here that is pretty low so if for example an engine order uh, ended up right at this frequency you wouldn't get very much attenuation so what can happen there well what what how can we improve that if we go back to the elements again and we notice that the neck resistance is now zero so one way of increasing uh, resistance in a Helmholtz re resonator is for example to add a screen uh, fine mesh screen in the neck so I'm gonna uh, just for a number put in 0 0.01. We won't go into units right now on this. And then we're going to add another one, resistance in the neck of the second resonator. So let's go back and recalculate. We will hold the graph we have. So now look at what has happened by adding resistance to the neck. Uh, it has brought the minimum up to almost you know 30 dB which is pretty good attenuation even though we have given up on attenuation at some of the peaks and oftentimes in muffler design it is more important to bring up the minimums than it is to try to get peak frequencies matched everywhere with the uh, with the pure tones or the engine orders that you are attenuating so this ends the video on Helmholtz resonators. Keep in mind Helmholtz resonators are for one frequency but their advantage is that they are very compact and if you want to broaden the frequency range you can always use them in series.